Hi there and welcome to episode 123 of the ADHD Adults podcast. I'm James Brown. The once was a man who is now a vampire apparently and as usual I'm joined by the once was not a real boy who is never grew up in terms of how many fucking Star Wars toys he has that didn't scan Dr. Alex Connor and Mrs. ADHD who once found a joke I said funny. Alex, hi. Hi. <coughs> Amazing. Uh, <laughs> Sam, hi. Hi, yeah. Your bit, Alex. <laughs> Right, a reminder that we started the podcast because Alex wanted to do jokes about James being thick, but this episode has ruined that. Mm. We now do a second episode a week because because Alex and James are now obsessed with threads. From but even it's a bit shit and a, a Facebook thing. We do need something else to wean us off it. Sam doesn't know what threads is or that this is a podcast. <laughs> Amazing. Anyway, this LinkedIn profile that says, looking for a job in marketing, sales, bricklaying, IT, or forensic science, I'd be great at anything, to be honest, of a podcast, <clears throat> is also a tragedy in three parts. We'll discuss how the week between podcasts has been from our perspective as people with all the things and as people involved in the community, whilst also answering your questions in part two, and then in part three, expanding on the theme of the week, which was ADHD and the three Ds, dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dyspraxia, or DCD. I know so you as don't always, need to read, but good Lord, that was a sentence. As always, I'll ask you how your week was, and no one will ask me, well, Sam will. So, Sam, how was your week? Um, um, Mixed, I think. Obviously, you were really low, and then that made me really low, and I've had my ASD referral through. So I'm trying to fill the forms in. Um, so that's really good. But the forms are really long. And I've sent one to my mum who's answered a few questions. And I've sent one to James who hasn't had time yet. So I don't know when I'm going to get all that done. I went to a PKS family day, palistic linear syndrome. That's mm. what my little nephew has got. And that was overwhelming. And I got actually, I got there on the time that my family told me to get there. But they were all late. And by the time I arrived, I, arrived, I was so overwhelmed. I just completely shut down. And I think, I don't know how long they've been shouting me and trying to get through to me, but eventually when I came back around, I was just completely out of it. And it was, yeah, it was a lot. And then I got home and James was suicidal. So how about you, James? <laughs> well, you've answered part of that question um, have, yeah? at the end there. Yeah, my, obviously I'm, I'm still struggling with mood. Um, good days, bad days, very bad days, some days that are average. I'm not sleeping again. Um, I find it fascinating that for me, sleep quality is goes in cycles. I'll sleep like a fucking champion for two months and then just can't sleep for a week or two weeks. And the last three nights, it's been very much the can't sleep end of things, um, which is shit. But actually recording it all. Now we've started doing the extra content on Spotify. Whatever Sam's doing is hilarious. Um, recording kind of what we do on a daily basis for ADHD towers is, is really cathartic, but fucking editing it isn't, as Ooh. Samantha will tell you. Get the tech guy to do it. It's what Sam and me do. Oh, I had He's to not repeatedly, a... and then I kept <clears throat> fucking things up, renaming the couples <laughs> after he'd already put them in the editing software. And I went, I thought I'd number them all. And it took them all out of the editing software. This was, I, I, anyway, I've messed up loads this week. How about you, Alex? Good, yeah. Mixed reviews as well. Um, I've got all my children here in the house with me, which is, oh. it's really hard to explain what that does to a parent. It's like, you, you know, when there's a noise in the background, you sort of don't know it's bothering you. And then suddenly the noise no, stops. Like, have you never had that really? Back, like a I always reason. know it's bothering me. I can hear oh, everything. Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, imagine, <laughs> so if you can try and empathise for just for a second. No, just the no. cats. Think of the cats, Sam. <laughs> think of the cats. You know what you yeah. like when the cats are back and when the cats aren't back. When the cats are back, you feel yes, yes. Oh yes, I know exactly how that feels. Exactly, it's like that. I suddenly feel I can breathe again, and I know they'll go back on Monday to their city boy lives, and I'll, I'll still have to think, oh, where are they all the time? But yeah, it's it's really really lovely. My six week course on ADHD, James, the more impactful mm. than your little talks ended. <laughs> And it's more like one of Sam's, really. Yeah, and that was surprisingly one of Sam's. important. I've done one and only ever will do one. <laughs> <I know. laughs> and it wasn't impactful. And that, yeah, and you, that... were, you were also better at the live podcast, which is fucking annoying, obviously. Yeah, yeah, it was annoying. Sorry, so, carry on, Alex. Yeah, and and 
but kind of lovely, really. And doing the extra content for the, I don't understand, Patreon, Patreon, whatever, was mm. really interesting. What I've learned, though, is don't do an off-the-cuff rhyme of Count Dracula that yes. has a slur in it that then yes. James has to go through and edit loads of, or the, I mean, yeah. the tech guy, whoever does that. Or just, cut, or just cut a massive chunk out, which had really good material in because we all repeatedly said that phrase and about, we can't keep that in. Well, we can't say that thing. No, we can't say that thing. <laughs> actually saying. Uh, and, and why saying, can't we I say that? A, Are we... I chose a random pair of letters to rhyme it with, and it happened to be an actual ableist slur yeah, by accident. Yep. yep, yep. And there's four minutes of content gone. Yeah. What about you? Next I guess. Blue. Yeah. Do we care, Sam? I've done. No, we've him? done. We've done. We've no. done me. We've done me. She she asked me already. What stupid mm-hmm. thing have I been doing instead of what I was supposed to be doing, Alex? Yeah. Well, no, I was feeling really dare read out so I ended up booking myself on a jewellery making course and buying a load of pole sets for a shoot, and I can't afford either of those I like I can barely service my debts every month so adding more debt is a really fucking stupid thing to do so yeah I need to cancel the course I think and send all this slow um this poll stuff back I think what were you supposed to be doing slow was because I was thinking of what I should be doing which is actually getting the tire replaced because i've had a slow puncture for years and i need to get this tire replaced but i keep spending money on shit you just said the word slow in the middle of a because i was sentence. thinking of slow puncture but so one oh, part right, of my yeah, brain was already that. thinking ahead of the slow puncture so yeah sorry um yeah that's insight. what i've been doing um mm. james well well yesterday evening i would like to have been resting i don't often rest obviously but after mm. a long day doing uh, an online uh, coaching course which is very enjoyable and informative I um, thought I'll have a rest and very quickly realized that Sam was emptying the bins. We have, we have jobs, which Sam likes to think are her jobs and my jobs, but the bins are definitely one that Sam, Sam does the bins, don't you? Yeah. And what she'll do, she'll take the bin liner out and then she'll go around the house emptying all the smaller bins in the bathrooms and the bedrooms. We've got a bin, bin in basically liner. every room yeah. because we, you know, yeah. the thing. And Money bags. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yesterday when I was trying to work out what I could chuck out of the freezer because there's, we haven't got as much freezer space, I chucked out some frozen dark cherries, put them into the bin. Now, they obviously defrosted and the bin bag was not juice. fully intact and therefore every single bit of beige carpet in the house had what looked alex like a trail of blood which was brilliant for mm-hmm. me obviously again ablest th- through it and you know dark cherry juice can stain i imagine some things so i spent yesterday evening having to first of all vacuum and then wash with a with the really expensive washing vacuum that i bought and we never used a year ago yeah the downstairs, the stairs, which is a bastard to do, and the upstairs, because there was fucking cherry juice everywhere, because she hadn't noticed that she was it, pouring cherry juice everywhere. And it probably, did it stain the ironing mark where she'd put in the carpet? No, 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 she missed the ironing mark. I avoided mark. That's that still part, there. No, luckily. Yeah, well and, then, and then, obviously, didn't notice that there was still loads of cherry juice in the bin. In the, so yeah, then it I went all that. over I mean, the which bin? And then James took it out of the, the kitchen. The main bin. To go outside so then all the all the floor that wasn't carpet i then hoovered and mopped so the good news is we've yeah. now got clean floors well most For of them days. yeah, yeah. And a, so that was really good uh, alex in every room as well. it was over 20 bins that's madness I right got 20 rooms <laughs> yeah, i think that yeah God, oh, right. Right. oh yeah. for fuck's sake <laughs> there's no, there's no po- i'm going home oh my god <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing a lot of chess to a really unhealthy level. Oh, thanks uh, for that, Ben. Moving and... on. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a joke one, which I'm impressed with. It was. And I bought some binoculars as well. For, for, some um... more? Oh, no. <laughs> Sam, 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 Sam. And Jules. You did buy They're... some recently. No. They're field glasses where the eye bits are the same level as the outside bits. Binoculars have a prism, so the eye bits are thin and the outside I'm bits so are wide. Sorry, Come on, this is basic binocular science. I'm so sorry, I asked that. <laughs> Christ. Anything uh, else? What? Any, any other? There's yeah. Apart from What's, field glasses, well, and binoculars. Yeah. No. Okay. Is thanks he's... for that, Blake. We're going to take no, a break. No, just, pop, just, no, 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 no. Just. Uh, I'm just. I'm just. Binoculars. Is it? Is it? The reason behind it is it personal bird basically. <laughs> well, well, ca- is it wood? Is it woodpeckers honest, or victims? 
my my brother said your your forest must be almost entirely populated by vultures by now. So yeah, <laughs> it's carrion birds. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Carry on, Sam. Come on, Thanks, Sam. Sam. Both. We're taking a break and in part two we'll be back with questions and thoughts from the ADHD Adult UK community. Alex, hi. Hi. What's up? Hello, Governor. Welcome back to the ADHD Adult Part 2, Episode 123. As always in Part 2, we're taking questions from the ADHD community, usually from Discord, James, but also Instagram, Twitter, mm -hmm. and possibly threads if we ever write one, or if it doesn't explode, or Let's something. Let's not have another thing. We don't, for the love of God, we don't need <laughs> we another thing. Anymore. Are you ready for the first one, the first have. question? Yes, please. Go, go, go. This is from... Oh, ADHD Adele? Oh, I, 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 I don't know how to. ADHDL. DL? It's Adele. ADHDL. ADHDL. Yeah, Adele. Adele. <laughs> Any information around ADHD adults being drawn into toxic relationships, being codependent on their partners, and scared to leave or be without that constantly, probably. Asking for a friend, monkey face with the eyes covered. Oh, great question. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Anyone, anybody want to hit this? Uh, th this I just is you've got a hospital asked. pass it. Yeah, we, this is something we get asked a lot because lots of our community seem to be either like drawn to people that control them or gaslight them or they're in toxic relationships or abusive relationships. And we get asked, asked a lot whether we're more susceptible to this. And I think there's probably lots of reasons that we probably are. Sometimes we have to rely on other people because we can't do everything for ourselves. And then that makes us more reliant on other people. I think as well, because we have loads of imposter syndrome and self-doubt and, and low self-esteem, people can take advantage of that, can't they? By tapping into those things that we kind of doubt ourselves. And if they're clever enough, they can kind of manipulate you and make you feel like you're really shit and you need them. And and you you two, why do you keep looking weird? Because what the fuck's going because on? Because it seems amazing. Yeah, who's replaced what? you with with <laughs> someone that, that is producing really clever <laughs> and and well directed, scientifically and, accurate content? Yeah, uh, what? I don't know about scientifically accurate. It's no, just it is. I've read the papers. Oh right. Oh okay. Oh right. Oh great. Really annoying. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, well, they were just my thoughts, and I've forgotten them now because I've been derailed by your faces looking odd. But um, Alex, do you want to carry on on the papers? Yeah, I mean you've nailed it. Really, that there's loads of reasons why we might be. Can I take issue with the word susceptible to? Yeah. Because sometimes we know. Sometimes it's have to compromise for the reasons you've given. Yes. So someone will do a washing for us. That's, that's just that's just being an old man. Yeah, um, but that makes us susceptible, doesn't it? Have I got? I guess so. Wrong? Yeah, I just I, oh, I think sorry. that I think that I knew that they weren't healthy though. I wasn't staying because I had to always. Rather, it was fuck it. yes, yeah. And so, so there's there's you know there's more intimate partner violence in both directions as well. Um, I think sometimes we hyper focus on the feeling and then it can go away. And hyper focus on partners and get have more emotional dysregulation in the if if the thing we think we want doesn't happen. It, it, there's some really really interesting papers on on As well, relationship. change. You know, a lot of us are not good with change, and it's a massive thing leaving a partner, even if they're abusive and you're not happy. It's still a massive thing to change. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a transition. Absolutely right. James, anything to add on that? Yeah, James. No, no, no. I think you've done a decent job. We'll move on to question uh, decent. two. Thank you for the, yes, yes, thank you for the first question. Question two is from Marieb or Marieb. I'm 47 and I received my diagnosis just a week ago. I'm not sure when you sent this in, but congratulations for that. Oh, Most people that I've told have responded with things like, oh, hun, no, I think it's, I always congratulate people actually oh. because you know more about yourself. Most people that I've told have responded with things like, oh, her and everybody gets like that from time to time. Or I'm really forgetful as well. I'm, I'm getting angry reading this, to be honest. Mm. I find it diminishes the shame and the hurt, amongst other things that I've felt for years. And I'm proper upset by it. I honestly believe that people would be more understanding, especially those that know me. It makes me feel like a fraud. And then I go away and have pretend arguments that we all do in our head. 
with them for hours and hours and wind myself up until I'm really anxious. I mask and display an outward appearance of calm and patience, but is it normal to be thinking about sidekicking these people in the throat? Alex? <laughs> well, I wrote in the script um, for this, Marie. Uh, thinking about it, yes, that's fine. Doing it, also yes, absolutely fine. <laughs> because, my God, you know how people with ADHD, almost all of us have an in inappropriate emotional reaction? That isn't one. That is just mm. fucking annoying and rude mm -hmm. and ableist and wrong. And you wouldn't say it about other disabilities. So as James would say, they can get in the fucking bin, right? What I'd say, this is really important. <clears throat> You're, first of all, you are, you're, you're valid, the diagnosis or not. If you have these symptoms, you are valid. Secondly, we all go through that those conversations, particularly if it's people that are close to you. And I think the way in which you handle this probably has to be slightly different compared to whether it's a close family member or friend. Do you want to keep or someone you, Yeah, or someone you don't give a fuck about. Yeah. The the Alex oh god the Alex analogy that that can be said very quickly and helpfully is if they say I'm really forgetful as well is that yeah well everyone's a bit tall but we're not all giants and you can say that in in a very very quickly uh, short and a an abridged version of the mental continuum thing which may help them understand that yes everyone is a bit forgetful but you are twenty or thirty times a day if it's somebody important in your life and they diminish or don't understand your ADHD, try talking to them on an emotional level. Don't just talk about your symptoms, but how does it make you feel to have those symptoms? How does it make you feel to be forgetful or to interrupt people or to not be able to do the, the tasks associated with the house or your job that you really want to do? Because that's what ADHD is. Remember, it's an intention disorder as fuck. It's two compliments for Alex in five minutes. For fuck's sake, I, I quit. It's, you know, we intend to do these things and we struggle to engage with those tasks. If it's somebody you really don't care that much about and you feel safe, either don't answer or, yes, kick them in the throat. Sam? Yeah. <laughs> There's loads of things to this, actually. That, I mean, if, if you giving them the benefit of the doubt they might be trying to empathize and might be trying to say well, you're fine as you are um also they might have it themselves and that might be why i was thinking saying, that sam that might be why they're saying oh doesn't everybody do that there's that <laughs> also they might not know about adhd and if they're worth it and you think they might take it on board then maybe teach them like james says teach them about how it affects you and say look i'm i've masked all my life and i've hidden my anxiety but i get anxious because of these things or I, you know this makes me feel this way and i feel under pressure and this is you know whatever it is this is why i arrive late or early or whatever just let kind of let them know and yeah if they're willing to and you can teach them about it then do it if they're not then fuck them off i just get <laughs> a few friends because it doesn't matter and to no. be honest, the less people, the better when you've got ADHD. So, yeah, <laughs> kick them in the throat um, and just move on. Right, moving on to questions. Wait. Oh. Or give them time as well. Some people come round after a while. What, you'd give already me a second it, of time. Alex. You'd already I wanted answered. to say that. No, no, I haven't. <laughs> you did. You started off by saying thinking about it. Yes, doing it also. Yes. That was a joke. Sorry, go on if you've got yeah. more. Oh God, I make jokes about it and how it happens around the people who often do it, but not at them or aimed at them because that's passive cool. aggressively. Not at all. No, I like to tell <laughs> tell the anecdotes of how it feels when people do this and say people do it all the time, which they do. And I'll make I'll I'll do anecdotes where it's where it might have happened, where it's you know extreme or it's funny, and just to get people and then say how it feels as a community for us to hear that is it is quite funny when we're all in it together and it people can choose then to take that on board or not it's an it's an invitation for them to to, to think about how it makes you feel they don't have to it doesn't it's not about them saying it they can they can think critically or they can fuck off either way yeah i know that's good right question three <coughs> it's from Polecat fitness hi and congratulations hi. um hi um, mm, ADHD yes. adult James, Alex, and Mrs. ADHD. I have a question about obsessive multitasking and its relationship with ADHD. I've always had more than one job on the go at one time since I was 14. I'm now 38. I currently have three jobs and charity work. I don't see this as a problem and lockdown nearly killed me because I was so restricted. My need to always take on more has 
always been a matter of contention with my neurotypical husband who often tries to get me to give things up and I cannot and un cannot understand why I'm not happy just doing one thing or why I get annoyed being told that I should or need to give something up. Is this a dopamine chasing thing or related to executive function or something else? Many thanks. You guys are awesome. Namaste. James. <laughs> thanks for adding that. First of all, hi, Kat. Kat is <laughs> Kat's amazing. What I would say is that there are a couple of ADHD issues absolutely tied into this. First is the being driven by a motor thing. And that's why many people in lockdown did struggle because that need to always be doing something, to always be engaged with tasks combined with the executive dysfunction of struggling to engage with tasks, you know, was a problem. You've just described certainly me and Sam, probably Alex as well. The fact that mm -hmm. just having to do all of these things at the same time, even when you've done it in the past and it's been a problem, but you still do it. So there is that, that need to do stuff, but absolutely uh, arousal in in people with ADHD, not arousal ding, but arousal as in kind of mental stimulation is something that is often different to people without ADHD. And that's one of the reasons that we are often described as dopamine seeking, because we are looking for activities that give us reward. And for many people with ADHD, that reward comes from multiple activities. Most of us are not worse at multitasking than people without ADHD. There are lots of studies that have looked at this. Some of us clearly need that multitasking to provide the reward and to feed that motor that keeps us running all the time. So for me, it feels very much like it is tied in with dopamine, reward, and kind of those central um, hyperactivity, impulsivity symptoms. Alex? This is a bit... Um controversial mm -hmm. one the first thing to say is i also have a portfolio career and if you describe it like that you sound like a posh executive when what you actually mean is do lots of different things and that is healthy for me what i would say though and this is the controversial bit is that there we need a neurotypical whisperer sometimes and are you 100 percent sure that you are hearing what your husband is actually implying or saying are you because i've been in this position are you mm -hmm. definitely clear that they're protecting your time and not asking for a bit more time with you as a partner. Or are you sure? If you're sure about that, and the best way to find out if you're not neurotypical, I think, or if you're neurodivergent, sorry, is to fucking ask explicitly out loud, nobody minds. Say, uh, so I, one of my favorite things is, I don't read social cues very well. Are you saying I'm neglecting you a bit? And, and yes, would be the answer. Stop playing chess till midnight, <laughs> for example. Um, and, and so I'm not saying in any way that's related to your situation. Sort of. <sighs> I'm just saying that I, I've seen it an awful, awful lot in the ADHD, especially community that we don't always know if, if what we hit, what people are saying and what we're hearing are the same thing. Just check. Sam? Yeah, that's a good point. You know, he's, he's probably saying this for a reason, either because you're not paying enough attention to me or because you may be displaying anxiety or stress with trying to do all these things and then that has yeah. a knock-on effect on him because he's having to deal with the anxious and stressed you that's trying to do all these other things but isn't giving him any attention it's so, so uh, and the way we display anxiety and stress isn't always the same it might look like that Mm. So my wife says all the time, I can see you and I'm thinking, I'm, I'm really not. I just look funny because I'm hyperkinetic. <laughs> I get yeah. it all. It's such a great shout, Sam. But you also, and me should do this on our own. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we'd never do it though, would we? Because James does no. everything for us. Yeah, um, no, yeah and, and, and what you're displaying is, you know, what mm -hmm. Alex coined domestic anxiety as well, that we can't cope when we've got nothing to do. And we yeah. often can't cope with just doing one thing. And that can be really, you know, even James struggles sometimes with me not being able to do just the one thing. So with a mm. neurotypical person, it must Ding. be even fucking worse. Ding. But yeah, just explaining to them, and I'm sure you have already. But yeah, it's just communication, isn't it? And maybe, for, so what I do sometimes with James is there are certain things that, so say if we're watching a film, he really gets enjoyment from watching films, but I can't just watch a film. Boy. So I'll be on my phone and he'll say, but I don't feel like you're engaging with me. But we've worked out that actually, if I do another task that's not on my phone, doing you know charity emails or something, but I'm doing an ear cup or something, he can cope with that. Yeah. So we find different ways of doing it. So I'm still doing more than one thing, but James can cope with it. And there might be, you know, different things that you can do that kind of help him. So it's all about communication. Right. 
Love it. Take it a break. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I see. It's happening, is it? They don't let me leave any any little like conscious gaps. In part three, we're taking thoughts on this week's theme, which is the three stroke five Ds, and the thoughts on the podcast. See you shortly. Welcome back to part three of episode 123 of the ADHD Adults Podcast, where we, I, I can't even remember, talk about stuff. So what made you choose the last idea for a theme? I'll start with James. James, what about you? <laughs> um, for me, I'd say it's discovering that I um, probably, as usual, have the fucking loss. And I need to start accepting this and looking into it and working it's out, blah, blah, do blah. I need more support or am I coping is it i mean is it the technical support i need or do i need to emotionally blah 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 kind of accept that this is part of my neurodivergence and it's okay that sometimes i will not sometimes in fact more often than not post something or send a message or an email that is almost unintelligible for example um oh, yeah. sam what about you <laughs> say the <laughs> thing say it I don't know how many times I have to say this, but I have no editorial rights on this podcast at all. No input. Alex? <laughs> That's not the thing. So I chose mm -hmm. I chose this idea for an episode, Sam. Thanks for asking. Um, because I wanted to do a sort of count Dracula not being able to count joke like they do on <laughs> Sesame Street. But I couldn't think of one that wasn't wildly insulting to millions of people who genuinely suffer from a frustrating difference. And and because it was just on the list of things we do, that probably I haven't I haven't checked that list. Was there That's any why. thought or the or tip from the theme that you forgot to say, James? There might be, but I've just minimised that page, so I don't know. Okay, um, well it says acceptance. <laughs> this is a whole yes. different level for me because the one thing I value is my intelligence, and I look stupid because of these issues. How do I square that acceptance? I guess difficult. Thanks for James. that. <laughs> mm, yeah, no, no she's she, it's like she's read my mind. That's <laughs> it, it, it is, yeah. you know, for once. It's like ironically, the, the one time, time yeah, ironically, for surprising. once, exactly. Ironically, for once, she actually read the fucking script and it was the bit that I was gonna say. Amazing, that isn't it? Um, it is, <laughs> Alex. Um, that you're more likely to have these together. I don't believe that there is scientifically, but not proof yet. I don't think. There's a, I think all neuro, neurodevelopmental disorders stem from the same cluster of reasons. And, and I also think that this thing of being driven by a motor fundamentally un, means that people don't know the difference between a motor and an engine because a motor doesn't have an internal power source, whereas an engine does. That's what an engine is. For fuck's sake, you just... Jesus! Monsters. For fuck's sake, I'll go then, shall I? Because he's just not speaking. Yeah. <clears throat> communicate, communicate with people. Tell them what you can and can't do and what you need help with. What? Just furious about the engine motor thing, Sam. Right, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and if it's and if it is, and, and you know, if people don't listen at work, say, and you're not getting where you need to do, then get another diagnosis and get help if, if you can. Go through access to work. You don't need a diagnosis for access to work. But yeah, just communicate and say, I struggle with this. Can you help me with this? And this is what I can't, can and can't do. I really like it. And it's it's important to know that if you've got the social power to communicate it, if you if you don't feel safe and you haven't, try and communicate it with somebody that has. Very nice. James, do you want to say your bit again or should we leave it for Sam to have said? No, no I, I, like, I like the fact that Sam, I didn't have to do anything. Yeah, simple. I do as well. That was episode one, two, three of the ADHD Adults podcast. And it was the first ever Friday extra edition of the ADHD Adults podcast that was after a Monday episode specifically on the three Ds that has been written with an apostrophe for some reason, which doesn't make sense, which are dyslexia, dyscalculia, and dyspraxia oblique DCD, which is five Ds. If you like this nonsense and want to get involved, please contact us at the ADHD Adults on the socials, on Discord. Just contact Gabby Logan, ask us to, uh, to email us. Um, <laughs> threads, whatever that is, all the other things. Goodbyes. Bye. See you later. Trigger warning,